you please reduce the, the volume of the microphone? Because I'm going to, yeah, reduce it a little bit. So I'm preaching this way about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. Now, the, the, the first message of this series of messages that I'll be preaching this way is called The Kingdom of God is God's total answer to man's total need. The Kingdom of God is God's total answer to man's total need. Math, uh, you know what I would like to do? If there will be somebody here uh, who could open the Bible and read out for me, I will just be mentioning the scriptures, and if someone could be opening as fast as possible and read out, will you, Pastor? Can you do that for me? We have the, you have the microphone here. I'm going to be giving you the scriptures. Let your wife write down all the messages. You will just be reading. <laughs> so you are set free from from writing this way. <laughs> All right, Ma- Ma- Mark, the book of Mark, chapter 1, f- verses 14 and 15. B- the book of Mark, chapter 1, 14 and 15 verses. Praise God. Mark, chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. Reduce him as well. Thank you, Mark. And saying... The time is fulfilled. Oh, be, just before then. Uh, oh, 14? Yeah. 14, now, 14. after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Okay. Now, it says, Jesus began to preach. And according to that scripture, what, did he, what was the message Jesus came with? What was the message Jesus began to preach? He came preaching the message, the gospel of the kingdom of God. Saying, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Now the statement, the kingdom of God is at hand, is actually meaning, if you hear it in the Greek, it's saying the kingdom of God is here. What is God trying to say? God is trying to tell us, hey... Because it was, Jesus was talking to the Jews. And the Jews were always expecting for a kingdom to come. The Messiah kingdom. The kingdom of the Mesh- Yeshua. They were expecting the kingdom to come. And their expectation was when this Messiah comes, he is going to bring the kingdom that is going to put an end to all their problems. He is going to bring the kingdom that will deliver them from the bondage to of, to to. to so, so the Roman Empire is going to deliver them from the bondage of Roman Empire. Is going to restore the kingdom of Israel. Is going to in, 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 uh, restore the dominion of God over Israel. So they believe that with the coming of Messiah, all their problems will be solved. Will be solved. They knew the destination of I mean, they, 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 of the, this, I mean, they, the purpose of this new kingdom and the, and the, and the function and the, and, the, and the calling of the Messiah was to put an end to their problems and to bring a total solution and a total answer to their every need. But on, the only problem they have is that they did not recognize him. They did not know and still up to now they don't know. They're still expecting the Messiah to come. But when Jesus came, he did not we we listen closely. You need to listen to me closely, what I'm about to say right, right now. Because you think you know what the kingdom is about. But you, you need to listen closely now. Jesus did not bring the king the gospel or the kingdom message the way we are preached, the way we are preaching it. The way people preach it to us. The way we understand it. The way we have been told. We have been pre- the kingdom that was presented to us was presented in, form, in, in something like, like this. Like saying, the kingdom of God is just to save you from your sins and get you out of the world so that you could go to heaven and go and spend eternity in heaven. So, so the kind of message we've been, preached to, we've been preached is like, you need to get saved, repent of your sins, Come to the church. That's when you really get confirmed in your salvation. The church seems to be the main thing. And you need to remain in the church till you die. Then we say bye bye. <laughs> and it, it, the, the church is the big thing. So the kingdom is actually presented to us 
as an escape route, as an escape way, as an escape route from our daily problems. So everybody that wants to, that most of the people that come to church, they want to escape from their problems. And they want to, so they come to the kingdom to escape from their problems, from their daily problems, as, and they see the kingdom of God and the gospel as a personal refuge. As a personal refuge to hide from the problems of the world. But let me tell you how God presents the gospel. Let me tell you how Jesus brought the kingdom. He brought the kingdom not as a refuge, as a place where we go and run to and hide in. Not a place where we run from the world. Jesus brought the kingdom as the total answer that is, going, that is supposed to be presented to the world to solve all the problems of the world. Jesus was presenting the kingdom as the, 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 the final answer. The final solution that everybody has been waiting for. Now the final solution is arrived. Now the kingdom that will bring you total solution from all your problems is come. Now he's saying, repent. The only thing you need to do is to change your way of life, your lifestyle. You only need to repent to get into this kingdom. Because if you get into this kingdom and you begin to live according to the lifestyle of this kingdom, you, the kingdom itself provide all the answers for your problems. Hallelujah. The kingdom becomes your solution. The kingdom becomes your answer. If you will live according to the standard of the kingdom, if you will abide by the lifestyle and by the values and by the principles of this kingdom, those principles themselves, they will fight your demons for you. Those principles themselves, they will bring your answers. Because just by abiding by them principles, you live right. They correct your hormones. They correct your molecules. They correct your cell system. They bring healing to your body. They bring health to your being. They bring life to your spirit. That's why when you get born again, you become happy. Even without people praying for you. Sometimes you just got saved, you get healed. Even without people casting them demons out of you. Why? Because you entered into the kingdom. But if you will be submitted, to the principles of the kingdom. If you will be submitted to the values and the rules and the lifestyle of the kingdom, you automatically become victorious over the world. Why? That is why it says this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even your faith in God. As soon as you believe, you get a victorious kingdom in you. That is why he was telling us he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. It's not just Jesus. The kingdom that is in you. The rules and the manners of this kingdom that is in you. It is capable if you abide by it. The problem we have is that we don't embrace the lifestyle of the kingdom. We don't live by the principles of the kingdom. That's why we cannot be victorious until you are submitted to the principle of the kingdom. Until you are subdued by the kingdom itself. Until you allow the kingdom to to overtake you. to, To overcome you. Until you are totally taken over by the kingdom. You cannot totally overcome by the kingdom. So Jesus was presented. So that statement, repent for the kingdom of God is here. What Jesus was trying to say is this. Listen closely. He said, hey, you guys, you have waited for a solution. You have waited for a deliverance. Now rejoice. Be happy. The answer is here. The solution has come. Look, the kingdom of God is here. That is what you have expected. That is what our fathers prophesied about. That is what they were looking forward to. Now, that kingdom is here. Your answer, your solution. What do you need to do to get into it? Just forsake the whole lifestyle. Forsake your sin. Think again. Repent of your sins. Turn 180 degrees. Rick, you know, refuse the lifestyle of the world, of this world. Embrace a new lifestyle of the kingdom. When you embrace the lifestyle of the kingdom, you become a citizen of that kingdom and you automatically become victorious over the world. So that's what he was trying to tell us. That repent, 
Rejoice. The kingdom is here. The, uh, your answer is here. Your solution is here. That's why God had to send John. And when John came, he was saying the same thing. He was saying, repent as well. For the kingdom of God is here. Get ready. The kingdom of God is here. The answer to our problems is here. Our expectation is here. Our deliverance is here. But the problem Israel had was that Israel was thinking they were expecting physical deliverance. They were expecting physical kingdom. That's why they didn't get an answer. That's why they d- could not embrace him. But really, the kingdom that Jesus brought was a spiritual kingdom. It was the kingdom of God. So, Jesus introduced the kingdom to the earth. And the way and the kingdom that Jesus introduced to the earth was introduced, listen closely, as the long expected solution to human problem. As the awaited, long awaited deliverance that Israel expected in the Messiah. It was not the Messiah in flesh or in person that is the solution. It is the answer that he brought. It is the kingdom that he brought that is the solution. It is not just Jesus that delivers each person. It is how at much as every individual embraces that kingdom, that they are delivered, that they are, their solutions come. The kingdom becomes our solution. The kingdom becomes the total answer to man's total need. So, the presentation of the kingdom that we had is as an escape route. It's like a personal refuge. No. What Jesus was trying to tell us is this. When the kingdom comes into your life, when the kingdom comes into your heart, that kingdom is supposed to take hold of your spirit and supposed to make you stronger than the world. And you, equipped by the kingdom, possessed, obsessed by the kingdom, you are supposed to go and face every challenge in the world. And by the truth of the kingdom, by the principles of the kingdom, smash into pieces all the troubles of the of the world. That is why in Matthew chapter 20, 28, I mean chapter twenty eight, verses eighteen to twenty, he said, "Go and preach all power in heaven and earth is given unto me. Go and preach the gospel unto all the earth." And he said, "Teaching them into our creation, teaching them to observe." All that I have to, to taught you. What does that mean? He's saying, go and preach the gospel. It's not enough for people to believe in the gospel. They must observe. They must be taught to observe. Because if they are taught to observe the lifestyle of the kingdom, it is the lifestyle of the kingdom that gives them solution. It is the lifestyle, the principles of the kingdom that brings them deliverance. It is that obedience and abiding by the rules and the life of the kingdom that brings them solution. Why is that so? Why is it that the kingdom of God is the ultimate answer to man's ultimate need? Why is he that is the kingdom of God that is the total solution for your every and every and if society's needs? Very simple. Let me prove that to you. It is because the earth itself was made to function according to the kingdom of God. Listen closely. You must know why the earth was created. The earth is only a copy. The earth is only a prototype, a miniature of heaven. It is a little heaven. It is the earth is modeled after something. The earth was modeled after the kingdom of God. That is why the earth cannot function out of the principles of the kingdom of God. It was created to be a copy, to be a simulate of the kingdom. So for it to function, it was created to function according to the rules and principles of that kingdom. That is why when the kingdom was here on the earth, 
And you know the kingdom was once here on the earth. The kingdom was here in the Garden of Eden. And what is the Garden of Eden? The Garden of Eden was not a physical place. The Garden of Eden was, God created the whole earth and separated the place and called it the Garden of Eden. Why? Because he put his spirit there. That he put his glory there. And that is what made it is the glory that makes the garden of Eden special. It is that glory that makes that garden special. And because the glory was in the garden of Eden, it was a reproduction, replica of the kingdom of God. It was a copy of the kingdom of God. And what makes the kingdom of God special is the glory. And that glory was present in the garden of Eden. So when man was in that garden, it was in glory. It was the same as if it was in the kingdom of heaven. That is why he had an open mind. He had, a, he had an unlimited, no, unlimited mind. The mind of God. That's why he could, he could name all the he could name all the animals and not get tired and not forget the name of any one of them. And names, ideas, still kept on coming to him. That's why he couldn't sin. He was in the glory. It is the glory that made the kingdom of, the, 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 the garden of Eden, the kingdom of God on the earth. So when man, before sin came to that garden, it was a copy of the kingdom of God. So when God spoke to man and said, be fruitful and multiply. He spoke to them to be fruitful in the garden. They were supposed not just to give birth to children. That's not what fruitful and the girl. No. He was telling them, be fruitful in the glory. Multiply the glory and cover the earth with this glory of the, that, is, that you are seeing, that you are right now in, in the garden. Fill the earth with the glory. That is why it was said in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 11 and in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 13 and 14 that and the earth shall be filled of the glory of the Lord. Because that is the original intent in the heart of God. He wanted the whole earth to be a copy. But it had to start from something small. That's why it has to start from the Garden of Eden. Because everything starts small. That's the beginning of creation. He created one plant. And it's everything that will multiply after his kind. He created one man. It had to produce you know, a man. And had to produce. And they are now six billion. It created you no know, animals. One pieces each. And they have to multiply. That's why the kingdom as well was in a miniature form in the garden of Eden. And man had the assignment to be fruitful in the kingdom. To multiply um, in the garden. To multiply the presence. To multiply the glory. And to fill the earth with the glory uh, uh, as the waters cover the sea. But you see, that prophecy is still going to come to pass. Hallelujah. Because it was prophesied again by Isaiah. It was prophesied again by Habakkuk. God is coming and is still going to come back to the original purpose. So, when man fell, listen closely, when man fell into sin, what happened was not just that God lost the man. What also happened was, God lost the earth, lost the kingdom. The, what was lost is that the kingdom left the earth. That is why the glory left, they saw their nakedness. It was the kingdom, the glory. The, because the glory is what makes the kingdom of heaven what the kingdom of heaven is. That's why it says over there there are no tears. Over there there are no pains. And there are no darkness. Why? And because it said the glory of the Lamb is the light of the place. So that's why there could be no need for sun. There could be no need for moon. Because the glory is what made the difference even in heaven. It is the glory that makes the difference. It is the glory that makes the difference. So when the glory was on earth, it makes the same difference. It makes the same difference. So when that glory left, there was an inevitable nakedness and lack that arises. So what left the earth? What the, what the earth lost? What what the, the man lost was the glory, first of all. The fall of man is the loss of glory. The, is the loss of the kingdom. So what was lost is the kingdom. The kingdom of God was lifted. The kingdom of God left the earth and catastrophe came. 
sin came. Destruction came. And listen closely. The earth and the man lost the ability to function like the original prototype of which it was prototype after. We lost the ability to live according to heaven's principles. We lost the ability to abide and live the lifestyle of the kingdom because when the glory was here, the glory was supposed to go spread from the Garden of Eden to all the earth and fill the earth with the lifestyle, the principle, the atmosphere of heaven, of the kingdom of God. So when that glory left, when heaven left, when the kingdom of God left, we could no more function like Adam functioned. We could no more function like the kingdom, like in the like in the kingdom, we lost the kingdom. We didn't have any example again. We could no longer n- function according to the principles and rules. The kingdom had left, and you know, the earth itself is just a copy of the kingdom. It's just a miniature of heaven. We are supposed to function according to heaven. That's why man also was created as a copy of God or as a as an image of God. So man himself cannot function without knowing the nature of his father. We can only function by God, by knowing his character, by knowing his nature. When we behave like him, when you copy him, God is love. When we live in love, that's when we prosper. That's when we are healthy. That's when we are happy. That's when we are full of joy. But when we refuse to live in love, we, de- we degree, we depreciate. We come to depression. We, 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 we live in pain. We, dest- we self-destroy ourselves. So the first, the, the prop, so because God knows that which was lost, and that which was lost is the kingdom in the first place. It's a kingdom that was lost. Essentially, it is a kingdom. And the earth, God knows, can never be able to function properly until the kingdom is restored or the lifestyle of the kingdom is restored. So the primary assignment of Jesus was to restore. The kingdom. So that's why when Paul, I mean when John the Baptist knew that Jesus was about to be born and he was the forerunner, he was coming to tell all of us, hey you guys, you don't know what? That which was lost. That which our fathers were dreaming about. That kingdom that they're saying is coming and is going to put an end to all our problems. He's about, he's at hand. <laughs> Their kingdom is just about to be here. That thing that was lost, that thing that was here and when everything was good, <laughs> it's about to be restored. And when Jesus came, he said, now relax everybody. Good news has come. That's why they call the gospel good news. Yeah. <laughs> now you begin to understand the Bible. And you begin to understand and we'll get to a place when you begin to understand your existence while you are here. See, when you hear people preach the gospel and teach about God and talk about the Bible, I, when I hear, I am a land. It pains my heart. Almost nobody has a full understanding of why we're here. Why the earth? Why the gospel? We just we just, have, we just know fragments. Little there, little there, little there. Nobody is seeing the full picture. So it bothers me. And we know that must be restored. Because Jesus said, until this gospel of the kingdom, not of prosperity, not of faith, not of healing, until this gospel of the kingdom, because it, that is what was lost. Is preached as a witness because that is what is supposed to spread yes. to all the earth, as originally said, be multiplied and fill the earth. That God's, that kingdom is what was supposed to be spread initially by man. So until that thing is spread now again by man, it will not come back. That initial assignment that was given to Adam must still be carried out by the second Adam in us. Then it will come back. Then the dispensation of this earth will come to an end. So, when Jesus was coming back and we came and said he came to preach the gospel, he was saying good news. 
Because all our troubles started when the kingdom lifted. Now that kingdom is coming back. He's bringing total answer. He's bringing absolute solutions to all our needs. Total answer to man's total need. Because when it's the kingdom, when, if we could just teach people to abide by the principles of the kingdom of God, that is how they are made to function. If we could just set up the earth according to the rules and the pre, no, and the, and the principles of the kingdom of heaven, the earth will be alright. Because it was created to function according to heaven's principles. It's just a copy of heaven. So when people teach us to live right, to have the fruits of the spirit of love, to be kind, to be generous, to forgive, we think they are teaching us to be religious. No, they are restoring our nature back to us. They are teaching us the lifestyle of heaven, of the kingdom. So that because if we could learn to live by that lifestyle, we overcome the earth. The glory of God is restored upon our lives. And evil runs from us. <laughs> Anybody listening to me today? <laughs>